What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be traveling to South Carolina to witness a man get sentenced for a one-punch killing. The very first interview I made on this channel, and I tell y'all this all the time, but it was a really good one to me. They agreed to meet up and fight out a dispute and ended up with the guy dying with just one punch. So really listen up, because I know a lot of people out there feel as though they're the fighters of the community for their town or whatever. They're well known for knocking people clean out. Just remember this case the next time you want to get into a fight. Honestly, when I went to prison, that's when I realized fighting is not what you thought it was. On the street, someone will knock you out and they'll stop, they'll walk away. In prison, guys will knock you out, climb on top, and beat you like a cold steak. You'll be coming out the cell looking unrecognizable. They won't even know who you are, even after checking the face cards. Fighting is not always as it seems. Ladies and gentlemen, trust and believe. But let's get into it. South Carolina courtroom. I believe this individual is going to be speaking before he's sentenced for the one punch killing. If you enjoy this type of content, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out the playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Mr. Cobb has previously entered. Uh, this is an indictment, a trivial indictment for murder. Uh, Mr. Cobb, having previously entered a guilty plea uh, the week before last in front of the Honorable John C. Hayes uh, to the charge of voluntary manslaughter, he is here for you today for the purposes of sentencing. The plea has been accepted, and we only need to address the sentencing issues uh, today. Oh, man, it looks like they're going to show a video of how things escalated, but it seems as though he's taking a plea deal. Okay, so he probably has a good idea of about how much time he's going to be looking at. This is the victim, Mr. Fields. This is the defendant. So, I don't know if you've seen the little red laser light he had, but this is the victim. It looks to me like he's elderly, the way that he walked out the bar, not to mention he's probably been drinking quite a bit. And this is the individual that punched him. Looks like a little dispute starting, but the defendant right there in the stripe tank top is pointing at him. Got a looks like he got a drink in his hand. But he's kind of staying away from the situation. Dude poured out his drink. He's going to leave. Turning around, probably saying some two cents. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So as the guy's leaving, you can see the defendant here. He hurries up, chugs his drink like he's about to go do something. He's like, nah, I need to drink all that. Throws his cup down. He's ready. He's already got in his head. He's about to go dust this dude off. I'm not going to show the whole clip but it literally was just one punch. And it looked like his homeboys were about to jump into the mix. They're probably, if not facing some time as well, very lucky that they didn't. Right after the punch and the dude hits the ground, they just walk away. But still, let's say if this happened in Virginia, all those guys are gonna get smoked. All of the people that walked over there with them. Look, it turns into about three or four people walking in on the dude. Three. And let's watch him come out the bar one more time. I mean, he looks like an elderly man. Is he coming out? Old timer. Look, you get into a dispute with an elderly guy, you gotta expect that if you hit him with a punch full force, it could definitely kill him. You ain't dealing with no young buck, man. Time don't wait for no man. And the body deteriorates over time, so it's always a risk getting into squabbles with senior citizens. Just let them talk and walk their shit, man. Let them go about their business. In the statements of law enforcement, Mr. Cobb said that Mr. Fields had been picking on him, harassing him in the bar all night, calling him names and so forth. What the video in its entirety shows, and we have that if Your Honor wants to see it, from the time Mr. Fields got out of the cab to the time he stood outside for five minutes, then he went inside the bar, and then he comes back out. That, that, the amount of time that elapses is 11 minutes. At no time in that 11 minutes is Mr. Fields even in the bar with Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb stays outside the entire time. There could have been no words exchanged in the bar, no harassing, no picking on him, none of the things that Mr. Cobb complained of in his statement to the police. 
they stayed outside the whole time. And just the the All he seen was a dispute going on with his local drinking buddies. And he tried to go in full speed like he did in many other situations, if I were to guess. It just didn't end like the last ones. According to the, the uh, bouncer and the manager witnesses who were out there, including Mr. Farrell's girlfriend, uh, Melissa, what he was saying at the time he was doing that was one mother punch, one punch, that's all it took. Mm. See, a lot of people be glorifying it like that as well, like a victory. Not knowing homeboy's dead, it's a different story. Robert, my husband was a good man. We were married almost 44 years before the sentence. Wow, yup, he was an elderly man. On the day his life was taken, your honor, before he left the house. So sad. He made three handmade bouquets of flowers for Mother's Day that day. Not one. Damn. He made three handmade Mother's Day flower bouquets that very day man that's so heartbreaking to me not two but three one for each child i've given him oh and he left me a note on top of my computer happy mother's day let me know he's gone for a walk so sad my life will never be the same everything happens within a certain context you know, this incident occurred on May 10th, which has already been discussed on Mother's Day weekend. And Mr. Cobb, you know, as a young man, growing up, did not have a mother. And I think that Mother's Day weekend was a time that was extremely stressful for him, time of depression for him. There have been numerous occasions where Mr. Cobb, for the very first time we met with him, right through this week, where Mr. Cobb has cried over the death of Mr. Stevens. And that remorse is real, too. That when he thinks about what he actually did, that a life was lost because of something he did, he does have true remorse. He has shed a lot of tears for Mr. Fields. And we did not videotape that or audio tape to present it for, but I'm telling you as officer of court, it's true. That he has, when he thinks about it in that context, not the context of, you know, being, uh, <coughs> coming to court, being in front of the honor and facing a 30 year sentence, that instigates emotions of, of being uh, in him. And he reacts in one sense. But when we just talk to him, he was in this, you know, talk about what happened and talk about what he did. He has real remorse and he cries about it because he's a human being. In this 25 years of representing people in criminal court, I can tell the court without hesitation that this is the first time that I've represented someone in a homicide case where one punch has been thrown. I know that it occurs, but it is an unusual case in that regard. I know the court is taking that into consideration. I'd like to address everyone. I don't know how truly and deeply sorry I am for the sense today. I know this isn't something I intended to do at all, and it was an accident, but I take full responsibility for my actions. I'm in no way proud of my actions. I want to say to the family, Mr. Fields, that I am extremely sorry. I am extremely sorry for this. I never meant to hurt Mr. Fields that night, and every day I wish I could go back and change my actions. I wish I could take this all back, and like I said, my bond here. I pray my life for his. I wonder every day how all of you are doing, and I pray that you're all, you're all okay and handling this well. I also pray for your forgiveness. As long as I know my poor judgment that night caused Mr. Fields to lose his life. It bothers me each and every day, so I'm asking and begging for your forgiveness. And again, I'm truly and deeply sorry for all this. Please forgive me. I would like to. I'd like all my family and friends to know that I'm sorry for this. I know that I let a lot of people down because of my actions, and I'm, sh I'm sure I lost a lot of your respect. And I promise I'm going to do everything I can to regain that respect. I'm sorry. I love you all. I would like everyone to know I've learned a lot from this situation. I've realized that I've been taking a lot for granted, and after this, I'll never take those things. And I'll never take those or anything else for granted again. I think most importantly, I've learned how to take control of a huge problem I've had, which is alcoholism and drugs. And through AA, I've gained the knowledge to overcome come them both and plan to, and plan to continue to overcome them. I recently found out I lost my best friend to a drug overdose, 
And if not for this situation, that could have easily been me. So I feel like I've been put in a situation for me to open my eyes to everything. Everything I was taking for granted and everything. He says he believes he was put in this situation to have his eyes open. But do you think that this is true remorse? You know, it's hard for me to say, but, you know, he, I definitely think he regrets doing it. Is he completely, truly apologetic and sad that this man lost his life? Maybe? I don't know. I'll leave that up to y'all. The video quality's not that great, but the teardrops definitely have a shimmer of crocodilian to them. Once again, I just want to say I'm sorry for my actions. My poor judgment that night of this incident took place. I'm sorry. I'm here from everything that's been presented to me this morning that this is an extremely unusual. Man, the clerk of court's holding his pocket, ain't he? Never seen him sit that close, your honor. But I do recognize the top lid of a white lightning when I see one. The easy thing for a judge to do is to always give the maximum sentence. That's the easy thing. You know? Is it? Being a judge is easy. Nothing I say, nothing I can do is going to bring Mr. Fields back. Whenever a judge says, you know, being a judge is not easy, it's either because he's going to give them too harsh of a sentence or it's going to be too light of a sentence. I have to balance vengeance, an eye for an eye. Oh, man. Versus mercy and compassion. Ooh. All right, indictment 14 GS 46 25 91. Charge of voluntary manslaughter. Sentence of the court is 15 years. Lucky. 15 years of his life is gone like that. I believe he hit the midway. I think the max for uh, manslaughter in South Carolina is up to 30 years in prison. So 15 would be in the middle, and that's a typical sentencing for a judge to give a person, especially if they don't have too much of a criminal background or if they have a little bit, they'll go right in the midway. If they ain't got no past criminal background, they'll go in the low end. If they got a huge record, then they'll give them the max. Typically, you know, typically. All the trouble that you got into before that day is gonna hold some kind of weight in the courtroom. They don't forget it just like a lot of these people on YouTube don't forget because it's on paper and it's right in front of their face. Anyways, hopefully y'all enjoyed and learned a few things from this one. If anything, is for the fighters out there, take it easy, man. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. I got plenty more content coming your way. As always, I salute with my right hand because the camera's flipped in reverse. To every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be, be safe and stay free.